Nicole and welcome to Nicole Topics and today's topic may seem late and probably is late but today's topic is a back to school haul. I know the back to school season ended. Why didn't I make a haul sooner? Well, we gotta get information to categorize types for skits. Nah, I'm kidding. This year, I want to sh when I do this haul, I want to show you guys supplies that I'll actually use during the year. Unlike last year, where I showed you guys supplies that I would use and did use, and supplies that I didn't really use or never touched. And in order for me to definitely know the supplies I will use during the year, that means I have to actually visit my classes and collect the syllabus and get to know the feel and how the class works exactly because sometimes syllabi will say oh you need these supplies but in reality you don't it's a weird thing i know this year i wanted at least 90 percent of the supplies i'll show you that i'll be using during the year rather than a 50 50. so um let's get started shall we Before I show you the papers and the notebooks, I think the best thing to show you guys first is like the general supplies and one of the general supplies would be my backpack. So this is my backpack. As you see, it got like this cute galaxy theme. If I'm correct, I'm pretty sure this is from a new line of Jansport backpacks called the Big Campus Backpack. And what really wanted me to buy this backpack was not only because it had a galaxy design, because as you guys see, it has a lot of pockets. And within some pockets, there's a lot of room or a lot of compartments. And that is perfect and is, it was exactly what I was looking for in a backpack this year. I feel like a big mistake I made last year when getting a backpack was getting a backpack with not a lot of compartments nor pockets. I mean, don't get me wrong, the backpack I had last year was really cool. It was so pretty, but there were times where I hated it because of the lack of pockets it had. Not to mention, my school makes us carry a laptop around. So the fact that I was mixing my back, my laptop with, all, with the rest of my books in one big pocket did make me worry sometimes because if that laptop gets damaged, I have to pay for it. <laughs> Not the school. But um, yeah, I'll give you guys a quick tour of my backpack for a second. Hey guys, voice over me for a second. I'm just gonna show you guys what's on my backpack. So right here, I'm showing you guys these S-straps. Then here's the corner of my backpack. As you see, only one side has a water bottle pocket. Now we're looking at the very first pocket of my backpack, which is the mesh pocket. As you guys see, it's very roomy for the front pocket. Then shortly above that, you have a small pocket, which is mostly filled with backup supplies. Then shortly above that, you have a the smallest pocket of the backpack, mostly filled with essential supplies. I'll share that to you guys later. Now we see the very first actual pocket of the backpack. And here is the main compartment, aka the biggest pocket. And then we have a 15 inch laptop pocket for the backpack. And yeah, that is my backpack for my sophomore year. Alright, now let's get to the rest of my general supplies. So in my mesh pocket, I have extra lead for the lead pencils I have. I have this calculator with a ruler built into it. Then you have the Steedler Staller. I don't know the name. <laughs> but inside is all this mathy stuff. I'm probably gonna barely or not really use this during the year. Since my math class provides us with calculators and compasses and all these other math stuff when we need them. But this calculator to me is a must-have emergency needed supply because you never know when you need a calculator. But I originally didn't plan to purchase this. My mom was the one because I'm taking geometry this year. So she think believes I'll need to use it one day. And you know what? I probably will. It won't be this year will probably be next year. The lead I've actually used a few times for the past few days. I believe I'll be using the lead a lot this year. I already shared you guys during a montage of what was in the second pocket, so let's move on to the third pocket. The first thing I want to show you guys is these colored paper made mechanical pencils that really work well. I actually made a video based on these mechanical pencils, so if you guys want to see it, then click that link up above. I also have a black and a silver sharpie with me, along with a black dry erase marker. I have medium sized scissors, big glue stick that should last me for a year, just like how it's always been. 
mini whiteout, the mini stapler. Now bringing a mini stapler to school may sound ridiculous to you guys, but if I gotta be honest, this is one of the most useful must bring supplies to bring to school. Because sometimes in class, the teacher might want you to staple some papers, but if your class ends in like five minutes, there's only one stapler in the room and that whole table where the stapler is, is crowded. Using this might be your best bet. I've used this since last year, my freshman year. I've used this a lot of times. It's very useful. Last general supply I want to show you guys is my school laptop. It's an HP. Pretty heavy, but I'll live with it. <laughs> now, my high school does block schedule, which means we have A and B days, aka we have four periods a day, rather than traditional schedule where you typically would have eight classes a day. So I'm gonna share you guys what I bring on a typical B day, because that's the more boring day and you might as well get the boring done and over with first. So on my B days I have English class, which means I'll have to bring the books because we'll have to read them. This is the assigned book we're currently reading for this quarter. Then as students for each quarter have to choose two books we want to read, during our free time and then we'll have like a big project or assignment near the end of the quarter based on it. I chose one graphic novel book called Spinning by Tilly Walden. It's a pretty good book so far. And since that book is so huge, I got this literally a hundred page book called The Franchise. I'm pretty sure it's about football or something. I don't know, when I was picking this book, time was running out in the library so I had to take whatever caught my eye first. The thing I want to show you is this book I DIY'd and it's it's my geometry notebook. As you guys see, it has like a blue galaxy beam to it. Surprisingly, this year I'm using a lot of folders for my classes. So I have two folders for my B-Day. One is for English and another one is for Spanish. And last but not least, why would you go to school without a binder? Right here I have a purple one inch binder and it's mainly for computer science class. But in this binder, you'll see a semi-DIY pencil case. And my pencil cases basically follow the same pattern of supplies. We have these two little post-it bookmark things, two Zazzle liquid highlighters, one holographic pencil, one lead pencil, two friction pen refills, and friction pens with the color of blue and black. My planner. I added book rings to my planner so it'll attach to my binder. And it's a standard 2019 to 2020 planner that uh, gives you a lot of room for you to write and even just write general things you need to do in a week. Not to mention it has a really cute design. Then we'll turn that over and we'll see the dividers I have. So I have notes divider for computer science and as you see there's just computer science notes on here and if I gotta be honest, if you're gonna plan to take computer science, make sure you prepare yourself to take a lot of notes because you're gonna be writing a lot in one class. Next sleeve is called worksheets, but it's also basically for computer science because computer science also gives out worksheets. The last divider is graph paper. This is not for computer science, but more for geometry class. And yeah, now you know what I bring on my B days. Let's move on to my A day classes. First thing I'll show you you guys is my violin case, or at least some of it. Speaking of orchestra, we also have to have folders with us. I have a fold. it's basically the same folder I used last year. Um, there's a meme on it. Inside the folder, there's the method book that we have to buy, and there's some music. Other folders I have this year is world history, big systems, aka biology or science. So my teacher wants us to bring a five subject spiral notebook. So here's that five subject spiral notebook. Then you have the A day binder, which is also one inch, but it's blue. It's mainly for Avid class because this year I'm taking Avid again. Instead of seeing a red pencil pouch when you first open it up, you're gonna see a blue pencil pouch with some different kind of stickers but look similar with a similar theme. Supplies, supplies I have in there are basically the same. You have these two posted note bookmark thing, a holographic pencil, two friction pen refills, a lead pencil, two Zazzle highlighters, and two friction pens, blue and black. When you turn that around, you'll see the planner my school provides to us. As you see, I Added book rings to it so that way I can attach to my binder. Actually quite nice. I like the cover design. I like the inside design because there's a lot of room for you to write. Unfortunately, I won't really use this to its full potential. What I mean by that is I can't really use the planner for the way I want to use it. My avid teacher wants us to 
use the planner and when we plan it has to be in the certain way which is list all your classes in the day and then just list down your homework in them that way just really doesn't work out with me if anything it makes me more disorganized the way i've always set my planner for years and has worked perfectly for me was just list them down the way it is then open up the planner and just use a highlighter to mark them as done i feel like if i categorize and then subcategorize my plans just really makes me disorganized although that's just me i know some people might say different yeah i'm not really actually planning on a planner unfortunately it's mostly there filled with paraphrased writing from what actually happened to my day just so i can get a good grade in my habit class next thing you see through on my divider is um my summer homework for my habit class and some other like drills folded in half it's basically it's just a loose leaf slash note taking area within there you just have worksheets last thing i want to show you guys before i leave is my actual planner that i actually plan in it's pretty and it's blue it basically has the same design as my b-day planner as you guys see this is where i actually write my plans the way that works for me i am just spilling a lot of salt right now no hard feelings but wait a second before we officially end this video let's just sit back and talk for a second you know just me and you i feel like i don't sit down enough and just talk to you guys about a little bit of my life i mean i'm pretty sure that most of you guys as the viewers don't really know much about me all the facts you guys really have about me is that i'm a sophomore in high school and i do ice skating ballet and play the violin i guess you could say this is like an update video or segment but yeah let's just start talking since this is a school related video let's talk about school our favorite topic since all of us are in school now, or at least if you live in the United States. How did you guys feel about coming back to school this year? I honestly feel very bittersweet about starting another school year. Mostly because I go through an age crisis and I don't want to grow older. I don't feel ready for the adulthood responsibilities. But at the same time, I'm, I, was, I was a little bit excited for a new school year because, you know, the good old saying, new year new slate, new start. I mentioned since I'll be a sophomore this year, I don't have to worry about like a lot of things that I had to worry about as a freshman, such as getting used to a new environment. Last year in freshman year, my bus picked all of us up in my stop at like 6.58 the earliest to 7.02 a.m. the latest. This year it's 7.19, so that's definitely better because I was so sleep deprived last year basically. At least this year, I get a better amount of sleep. Yeah, overall, I felt pretty bittersweet about it. Comment down below of what you guys felt. I'm very curious. School so far for me has been pretty normal, if not a better start than freshman year. The way I'm talking about freshman year makes it sound like I had a crap freshman year. Um, I actually, my freshman year was actually not bad. I mean, there were some experiences and like a lot of situations where I hated it. But there was a, it wasn't that bad compared to some other years at school. But, um, sophomore year is pretty, um, pretty chill. Of course, since I'm in the next grade level, academics have became, have become more intense and more rigorous in some classes. <laughs> English. I've been pretty busy-ish with school, and I'm hoping as, as soon as like October, November like rolls by, it'll start to calm down a little bit. But we'll see about that. All of my teachers, I don't really have a problem with my teachers. All of my teachers are pretty young, which I like because in my opinion, young teachers are just better than the old teachers. I feel like most old teachers, not all of them, but most of them, I feel like most old teachers, like when they teach you, you can just tell they're so ready to retire. <laughs> young teachers, especially if they just started, they're like, they can relate more to the students. But yeah, everything seems to be going normal for the first two weeks of school. The only complaints or problems I have with this year is my bus. Now I know I just said my bus comes later to my stop and I was really happy about that. But the problem is my bus driver 
never comes on time. The first day of school in the morning, she came like 12 minutes early. So after I ran to ran from my house to the stop because my stop is not that far from my house, I just thought to myself, you know what, I'll wake up earlier for the next X amount of days I have left of school. Then the next day from onward up till basically today, this bus driver comes to my stop at like 7.25 to 7.30. Classes start at 7.45 and we're not the last stop. So there will be multiple times where we would get dropped off to school and we only have like two minutes to make it to class. At one incident, we were late. you think riding the bus in the afternoon would be better, right? My bus doesn't even come to the school on time in the afternoon. Like there will be, there are multiple times now in this past few weeks where this bus comes to school to pick us up and all the buses left like 10 minutes ago. This That means this bus was like 20 minutes late. <laughs> but I think what really put me on my last straw on the bus is that last Monday as of the second week of school. I won't go too much in detail with this because it's a very long story. But the school day just ended, I'm on the bus, the bus driver misses my stop and me and my whole stop basically had to walk home from the next stop, which was naturally a long walk. But the thing is, I moved into this house you see a few years ago, so I'm not as familiar with this big neighborhood as I am with all these other kids who are on my bus stop with me. So here I am walking around for an hour. My mom basically picked me up at a busy intersection. Of course, we were all mad about this. We went to my school, reported just by looking at how things were dealt with for the past like X amount of days since that happened. And a few days after that incident, the bus just didn't come to our stop in the morning. And then soon it never came in the afternoon. And honestly, at the rate of how things are getting dealt with, I really do not think the situation will be any better. I'm just really grateful that my parents are able to drop me off and pick me up from school. So ever since Monday, I didn't. I don't want to really ride the bus. The bus could literally be another video. You know, if you guys want to hear the whole, like the full version story time on my intersection story, you can just comment that down below. I won't mind making it. <laughs> I have multiple bus stories from the past whole time I've been in high school. I've been wanting to make a bus related story time video, but I just haven't gotten to it. But if you guys really want a bus story time video, then comment that down below and I'll make one as soon as I can. But beside from that though, another complaint I would have about this year is that the school is enforcing something called a cold call, which is like there's the boss of the teachers. They're telling the teachers to just randomly call people who are not raising their hands, basically. I assume this is a way to make students pay more attention to class. I just hate being called on and not even have my hand risen because that kind of situation just really makes my heart raise. I know it's probably very introverted for me to say, but I am an ambivert, so. It, will, it is normal that I do have introverted traits. But yeah, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Cheerio!